So I'd like to first to thank the organizers for allowing me to speak in this place and thank Ken for introducing uh, discrete orthogonal polynomials because it will be, it will be the beginning of, uh, of my topic. So um, I, I, I will consider a discrete orthogonal polynomial ensemble. So my state space will be either n or z or z plus one half. And I take omega to be a, a measure uh, with what E. So yes, I, I start with general things and then move to uh, the examples I'm interested in. Uh, so with, well, um, and the support will, uh, will have to be infinite. So it's a little bit different. And uh, with finite moment of all orders, well, of x to n omega dx is finite. So I have the corresponding sequence of orthogonal polynomials. And just to fix notations, I will write Pn of x as Cn xn plus our terms. And um, uh, their square norm uh, is just hn. So, uh, to, to this, I can associate, well, um, a probability measure, Pn, on e to the n, just given by Pn of x1, 10, is, well, a normalization constant times the square van der Mond. and the product of the weights. And well, as it was said many times here, uh, so you can see it does not uh, charge uh, interpols with two um, equal coordinates, so it can be seen as a point process on E. And this is a determinantal point process, so that is we have uh, the probability that uh, some subset I fixed is included in my random configuration x equals the determinant of kn ai aj little n and kn is the Christopher Darbo kernel. So Uh, it just can be expressed. I one uh, p n of x n of y divided by h n, and I include the norm here in the the weight. Sorry, in the kernel, and it also has a nicer expression for me for what follows. So again of x omega of y times cn divided by hn cn plus 1 of x 1 of y uh, pn of y pn minus 1 of x divided by x minus y. Okay. Uh, so now I want to talk about crystal deformations of these kinds of things. Um, so I take k points 
real points which lie outside the support of omega. And I modify, I, I, and I do what is the so-called Christoffel deformation of the measure. So that is, I replace omega by omega k, omega k of x, and it will be the product i equals 1 to k, x minus ui, square omega of x. Uh, well, so I have this new measure. So I have a new orthogonal polynomial ensembles, P and K, with kernel K, K and K. And um, uh, so why to do this? Just informally speaking, this is related to uh, averages of characteristic polynomials. So product of characteristic polynomials, because if I have, let's say, um, so if this were um, the the density probability of eigenvalue of a random matrix. The, the average of, uh, under this new measure, will be the average of char product of characteristic, characteristic polynomials as the UA, UI with respect to the oldest measure. Yes? Uh, and also a question that arises, if I know something about Pn as n tends to infinity, what can I say about P and K as n tends to infinity, and can I uh, perform such deformations for more general determinantal point processes? Okay. And uh, the answer is yes in uh, three examples. Hmm? No, you are not in the, it's a node set. So as, uh, th this new measure is not degenerate in a sense. Uh, okay. So the first example I will talk about is, is the Charlie ensemble and the discrete Bessel process. So. Bessel process. So uh, the Charlier ensemble is the um, orthogonal polynomial ensemble with weight, uh, the, which weight is, which is the Poisson distribution. So it has a parameter, and I take omega a of x to be exponential minus a, a to the x over x factorial. So um, the, the corresponding orthogonal polynomials are the Charlier polynomials, and it is known from uh, Johansson from year 2000, I think, that uh, in some regime I will now describe, this ensemble approaches the discrete Bessel process, the one, uh, so that is the, plan, the Poisson exponential measure Sasha was talking about this morning. Uh, and well, what, what, what happens for Omega a k. Uh, so let me state the theorem. I take alpha to be positive. Uh, a will be alpha over big N. I have to scale this parameter. And I take u i to be some e fixed u i tilde plus N in, the, in this definition. And so the theorem is uh, that uh, the, Chris, the new Christoffel Darbo kernel, K and K, uh, has a limit uh, in this regime as uh, n tends to infinity. So that is to say, have this constant factor. Um, I have another constant factor here. 
here I have some interaction between uh, my particles and uh, the UI tilde. And I still have the integrable form of the kernel in the limits, and it is described with a discrete run scan of Bessel functions. I will write formula later. Let me write the formula here. Uh, yes, so GP of X. Uh, I said it's a discrete function of uh, Bessel functions. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, no. So it's for p equals zero or one. Uh, so this is a two k plus one times two k plus one determinant. Minus two k. So I write them uh, for all my UIs. Then I have to add the derivatives with respect to uh, the index of the Bessel function, so I don't know if there's a, a usual notation. I note them L. One. Okay. And at the last line, I have um, my function at point, my Bessel function at point X. Here, and I also write what is CK. So CK is the upper left corner of uh, this big determinant. So it's a 2K times 2K determinant. Ah. Okay, so this means in the sense that uh, such deformation can be defined uh, for the discrete Bessel process, yes? Eugene Tilda, so uh, here I introduced, uh, so I fixed point UI, and then, but here my points UI have to move with N, and uh, U, U tilde is just the, what is fixed here. So when I have a similar result for Z measures on partition, so let me state its result before I, uh, before I move to the proof. So what are the Z measures on partitions? So partitions means uh, Young diagrams. Um, so 
this is, this, these are measures on the set of Orleon diagrams, which depends on three parameters. And to a partition lambda, it assigns the weight one minus x. So this is the normalizing constant. I will write later what. Uh, Uh, size lambda, lambda over factorial lambda. If there is no mistake, yes. So here is a generalized Poshammer symbol. So it means A uh, subscript lambda is the product of all boxes with coordinate ij in lambda uh, of A uh, minus i plus j. Uh, and well, there are, first of all, as a constant C is in zero one. And there are three cases where this defines a probability measure, namely when it is positive. Um, so the first one is, well, when uh, Z and Z prime are complex conjugates. The other one is when Z and Z prime um, both lie in the same interval with integer coordinates. And the last one is uh, when, let's say, z is an integer, and uh, z prime uh, is bigger than uh, z minus 1. Uh, OK. So. What I want to do now is to perform, can I do Christoffel deformations of this ensemble? And can I say that it is a determinantal point process? And in what sense? Yes? Yes? An integral representation? I would love to have one. <laughs> Uh, well, by a, a simple lemma, I can write it now if you want. It's just uh, with the, the way that is here, scaled times the uh, orthonormal Charlier polynomials with index n plus l and x plus n. So this tends, as n tends to infinity, to uh, the Bessel functions with index x minus l to square root of l. So, and using an explicit expression of k for k and k, I have, I, I directly obtain this limit. Okay. Um, So let, let me talk about the, the Z measure before. So it is known since the work of uh, Borodin and Chomsky who introduced the, these measures that uh, they, so to a partition you associate a point process. Uh, and uh, this is known that these are determinantal point process. And uh, in the third case, uh, this is an orthogonal polynomial ensemble with, um, uh, with a Meixner weight. So this is a Meixner ensemble. So um, let me say, in, let's say this is one, this is two, this is three. 
case three. Um, so first in case three, what I have, if you, if you look at well, uh, I have that uh, the length of my partition. So this is the, yeah, I have a partition. Its length is, uh, well, its length. <laughs> Uh, the, the last uh, part of my particle with, which is not zero, of my partition which is not zero. So uh, in case three, the length is fixed. So it is convenient to uh, associate to it a point process on the positive integers. So and under the map, lambda associate lambda i minus i plus big N. So for i equals 0 to n. Um, uh, mz, z prime psi uh, is the Meixner ensemble. And well, so it is fine because here I have well, from i equals 1 to n, I always have the, um, so this is an orthogonal polynomial ensemble. I can perform Christoffel deformation of this, on this ensemble, but for the case, other cases, it is not obvious that I can do this because uh, I might, here I have a fixed deterministic number of uh, particles on the, integer like, on the integers, but for the other cases, the, the lengths of the partitions are random or even inf infinite if I consider infinite point processes, I will say this. So, and the, the theorem is, a, so let me just give a definition. Uh, so, the Christoffel deformation of M Z, Z prime psi uh, is defined by so I introduce the product from I equals one to L of lambda product from J equals one to K of lambda i minus i uh, plus z um, minus what it is uh, plus z minus u i and I take uh, no I, I have to break the symmetry somehow uh, here it's a j yes a z prime uh, minus some other things, Vj, and uh, times the original measure. And well, he, uh, if I choose well the Uj's and Vj's, uh, in the in the third case, in in, in this case, I will uh, I will have the um, the, the, the Christoffel deformation of the Meixner ensemble in the sense I explained in, at the beginning. Yes, and the theorem is that with suitable choices of the UJs and VJs, uh, uh, this new measure also uh, the, also gives a determinantal point process with an explicit kernel and given by which has the same form as this one, uh, but with discrete Wronskian of uh, Gauss hypergeometric functions. So, 
make use the UI to be uh, real and not in Z plus one half. So this will be the convenient set of uh, for the, the convenient configure phase space for my particle to live for the case one and two. And I take the I to be U I plus Z prime minus Z uh, plus one half minus one half. Then case one and two. Uh, and uh, so now my new configuration of points is this one. And the i minus i plus one half. And this is an infinite configuration. It's for all i. So at some point I will. Uh, I will have just particles on the left, uh, and m z z prime k x c uh, is a determinantal point process. Uh, uh, well, with a kernel, I uh, I will just say. Uh, described by uh, discrete Vronskians of Gauss hypergeometric functions. Two F1s, yes. Okay, and well, a reason why uh, I wanted the, these deformations to uh, to be determinantal point processes is because um, I wanted to have deformations of the process with a gamma kernel which is a, a limit without any scaling of the Z measures, but only in the cases one and two. So the, for the Meitner ensemble, we don't have the convergence to, uh, to the process with the gamma kernel. And so I, I wanted the, these deformations to, uh, to be determinantal processes uh, with nice formulas to, to obtain deformations of the process with the gamma kernel. And this is the third theorem of this talk. But unfortunately, I can obtain it just for k equals 1. Uh, so let me denote, I don't know, k, z, z prime, uh, xi for the, uh, with a k here for my new kernel. Uh, with k equals 1. Um, k1, and in case is 1. And two, k one z z prime c. Uh, of x and y, and here I have to add something. One minus c uh, converges as uh, c tends to one. Uh, to a kernel described by the gamma, by the gamma function. Okay. Um, so the, the formula is no more on the blackboard, but um, when uh, when xi tends to one, tends to one, it gives more and more uh, uh, chance to uh, for for big young diagrams. So 
uh, what I have at the end is not a probability measure on the set of all young diagrams, but I, I have a point process on the, on the lattice, uh, which does not correspond to, uh, to a young diagram. So now uh, let me move to the proof of all of this theorem, so at least some ideas. Uh, it's, uh, this one is too long to, uh, to write down. So the, this one is not that long, so maybe I, sh I think I will write it at some point. So it is as long as this one, but the, the, the one with the gamma function is hard to write and uh, with, with quite heavy formulas, yes. Okay, so the proof. So this is a general formula for the, the modification of my Christoffel Darbu kernel. So I have the square root of the original weight Yeah, well, because I've changed my weight, I, I must have something like this. And well, there, are, there is a constant factor which depends on the normalization. So, and, uh, uh, and here I have something like this. So I, I write what is D and delta. So we remember CN and, uh, and HN were the leading coefficients and, and square norm for, for the original orthogonal polynomials. And DN of X is again a determinant so it's uh, Pn of x, uh, no, Pn of u1, sorry. Pn plus 2k1. Here, Pn of uk. Pn plus 2k. K. Then I have the derivatives, Pn prime of u1, n plus 2k prime of u1, etc., till Pn prime of uk. And at the last line, I have uh, Pn of x, n plus 2k of x here. Yeah. And delta n, okay, so what I write like this is the upper left corner. Okay, so now uh, I have everything to finish the proof for the deformation of Bessel because uh, as Marco asked me, I have the following lemma. Uh, and I have a, uh, an analog lemma for the derivatives of the Charlie polynomials, which converge to so mi minus something. They converge to the derivatives of the, of the Bessel functions with respect to the argument. And, uh, well, 
as you can see here, uh, we, um, we have some homogeneity in this formula. Namely, I have here products of two determinants of size 2k plus 1, and here I have a determinant of size 2k, which is squared. So I can uh, multiply both sides of this ratio by the, the corresponding weight I'm interested in. I already have the weight here, which, uh, which play a role for the plus 1 in the, because these determinants have size 2k plus 1. And then uh, using the lemma, passing through the limit, so I, I can, everything is explicit, so I also, uh, I, I, I also uh, can control this quantity. I, I, I obtain uh, precisely the, this result of the first theorem. Uh, now, for the z-measure, it's, uh, it's more delicate because there is no, uh, there's no limit procedure, but the argument is a, an analytic continuation argument. Just for notation, I will write uh, sigma of lambda will be lambda i minus i plus one half. And so this argument is due to, to Borodin and Olchansky, and because here I have to break the symmetry to, to make the, for the definition to make sense. Uh, this argument works, but uh, we, we have to do some more efforts to, to make it work. So the argument is as follows. So you know that uh, when z equals n and z prime uh, is bigger than uh, z minus 1, you have an orthogonal polynomial ensemble, so it is a determinantal point process with an explicit kernel. So I, even for my deformed case. So the second fact is that um, so this is more original Chansky. MZZ prime psi that A1 AN are included in sigma of lambda. So for any a1, a1, in, an in z plus one half, this quantity has uh, an analytic expansion. An, uh, expansion in psi. With polynomials, uh, with coefficients, which are polynomials in z z prime. Nice. So, and you know that uh, at least for the case when z is uh, so, you know that for the case when z is an integer that this is a determinant of some, uh, of some kernel. If you also have that, so if this kernel would make sense for other value of uh, z and z prime, which is the case, and which satisfies the same property, that is, it has an expansion in psi with co co coefficient which are polynomials in z, z prime. So you can say that these two uh, series in psi uh, should have the same coefficients. These coefficients are polynomials in z, z prime. And, well, this set in uh, C2 uh, is a set of uniqueness for polynomials. So the same formula should hold, so the same determinantal formula should hold for the other cases of uh, z and z prime. And, uh, well, this is precisely how it works. Um, yes, so a notation. Uh, fine, yes. 
psi x uh, uh, with parameter z, z prime, and psi to be the Meissner polynomials so psi a at some point x tilde divided by its norm L2 omega, well, which depend on z and z prime times the square root of the weight. So I have some shift playing a role here. So my, my new variables are expressed through the, the other one. Where, where is it in my notes? Uh -huh. Yes, five minutes, okay. And yes, it's uh, with x tilde being x plus n minus one half, and a is n minus a minus one half. Uh, at this point, z equals n, and z prime is uh, n plus, well, is. Uh, n plus some beta uh, minus one, where well, beta is, is, is defined through z prime and z. Uh, and so this holds for these choices of parameters. And, but the, well, there is an explicit expression for this function psi, psi a through Gauss hypergeometric function to f1, uh, which I will not write since I only have three minutes and I will spend like four minutes to write the formula. Uh, but still, this, there is a formula for these functions which, which, which depends only on z, z prime, and x, and not on, uh, on n, and a, uh, on n little n spe specifically, if you want, yes? And uh, the trick is, uh, so, in your Christopher Darbo kernel for the deformed process, you can replace by homogeneity arguments, the same as before, you can replace your, your Meissner polynomials by the function psi a. Uh, and then you want to uh, transform your function psi a so that they satisfy the same property as the z measure, namely they have an analytic expansion in, in psi with coefficients which are polynomials in z and z prime. And, uh, well, uh, well, let's do this. At least some words. So if I define f z z prime of x uh, to be gamma of x plus z uh, plus one half divided by square root of gamma of x plus z plus one half gamma uh, x plus z prime plus one half Um, the proposition, not mine, it's Borodin Olshansky. Psi r of x, z, z prime, psi, uh, equals f, z, z prime of x divided by f, z, z prime uh, minus a. Uh, times some integral which depends on a, on z, on z prime, and on x a, and in x. And this integral uh, has an analytic expansion in psi with polynomial coefficients in, in z, z prime. So in here, you can, you can remark that I uh, have broken the symmetry in the function, so I did not say it, but the function psi a is r, sy r symmetric with respect to the changing z, z prime. But here, it is, it is not obvious at all because, well, this one is not symmetric. 
this one is, well, it did not write it, but it's not symmetric as well, but it should be symmetric because psi, uh, psi A is. So for example, uh, for, for this factor, I can use um, both expression, one with z, z prime in this order, the other one with z, with z, uh, with z first z prime and then z, and, uh, and I will get rid of, of the, this factor f z z prime minus a in the, in the formula because, uh, well, there is a product structure in this determinant, and uh, as you can remark, uh, f z z prime is just is the inverse of f z prime z. So the, this factor will disappear. And the same thing happens uh, for, for the, the upper side of the ratio. You have boundary terms because the determinants don't have the, the same indexes, but still it works. It has an analytic expansion, and we, in, in Xi, with, with polynomial coefficients in ZZ prime. Uh, and this concludes uh, the proof of, uh, of this theorem. So thank you.